it starts. So, I think I may have willed this game into existence. Because a couple of months ago, I randomly picked up Aladdin and Lion King from a used game store, and then almost immediately after, they announced a compilation of the classic Aladdin and Lion King games, called the Disney Classic Games Aladdin and Lion King. That can't just be a coincidence, right? I was clearly destined for this review. Okay, so maybe they're releasing them now to capitalize on the hype of the live-action remakes that came out earlier this year. In any case, this compilation is almost exactly what you'd expect, and probably a fair amount more, including a bunch of different versions, a few quality of life improvements, a couple of bonus versions of Aladdin that have never been released before, as well as some super cool behind the scenes features to round out the package. There's quite a lot going on here, so let's go ahead and break it all down. And let's start with the Lion King games, as they're the simpler of the two to discuss. Here you'll find both the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions of the game, as well as the Game Boy port, which includes a colorized Super Game Boy variant. The Japanese Super Famicom version is here too, even though it's nearly identical to the Super Nintendo one, except for a few super small tweaks, like a darker option screen background, subtitles for each level, and a small color correction for this Rhino. Now, when it comes to Aladdin, it's a little bit more complicated. Of course, you have the original Genesis version, as well as a nearly indistinguishable Japanese version. But in a neat twist, there's a brand new third version too, called the Final Cut. And it was created specifically for this compilation, in order to iron out some issues identified by the original development staff. Things like fixing bugs and smoother camera movement, along with a few balancing tweaks too. It's all pretty subtle, but it definitely amounts to a better experience overall, and it's my preferred way of playing. In addition, you'll find a short beta version of the game that was playable at trade shows back in the day, and it features a ton of elements cut from the final game. Finally, there's a Game Boy port here too, along with its colorized Super Game Boy counterpart. So altogether, that makes for 6 different versions of Aladdin and 5 for Lion King. Yeah, it's quite a lot! Even if most of it is largely redundant. But there are some notable absences. Like the Super Nintendo and Game Gear versions of Aladdin. Which is understandable, as neither of them were developed by Virgin Interactive, unlike all the others. However, the Game Gear version of Lion King was, which makes its absence a little bizarre considering the Game Boy version made the cut. Now to be clear, these games are neither remade or remastered, and are instead presented in their original forms via emulation. And I have to say, the Super NES and Genesis versions seem pretty much perfect to my memory. The Lion King on Super Nintendo, for instance, looked exactly as beautiful and played as frustratingly as I remembered from my playthrough a few weeks ago. And even though I'm not quite as familiar with Aladdin on Genesis, I didn't really notice anything that seemed out of place. Aside from maybe a sound effect or two that sounded just a little bit off. But it's possible that was just a glitch in the original game. Now I can't speak as definitively about the Game Boy versions of either game, as I've never played them before. But they did seem to perform on par with the videos I looked up. Of course, being emulator based, you can expect the usual array of enhancements. Visually, you have the choice of three different display sizes, with a toggleable border that fills in the empty space that's unique to each game, along with a trio of filter options to emulate the appearance of a CRT TV, monitor, or LCD screen. Although I generally prefer to keep them off, they do help to disguise some of the more obvious dithering effects, such as this wall in the Game Boy version of Aladdin, which I almost mistook for a transparent PNG at first. Gameplay-wise, you can remap the controls on a per-game basis, as well as create a save point whenever you like, although you are limited to just one per game, but that shouldn't be much of an issue with how short the games are. But the single best addition is the ability to rewind at any point and instantly undo a mistake. It's basically a godsend when it comes to these games, helping to take the edge off some of the rougher moments, although it is a bit easy to abuse, potentially robbing you of the satisfaction of finally beating these games. Although I have absolutely no regrets using it on this darn bonus game. <laughs> Who's laughing now, Jafar? Furthermore, some of the games also feature a pre-recorded playthrough of the entire thing, that allows you to take control of it at any point, so you can skip right to the end if you want to. It's a fantastic addition, although it is a little odd that not every version supports this feature, with the Genesis version of Lion King being a notable exception. The developers also added some achievements too, and they're all very basic, and the game doesn't even care if you cheated to get them or not. Which kind of undermines the entire point. The collection's presentation overall is pretty decent, if not quite spectacular. I love the artwork when selecting which series to play, although the actual game selection menus are a little cumbersome. Paging through each game one by one can be a bit annoying, and I really have no idea why they hid the Game Boy games on a separate sub-menu. Now speaking of the games, you might be curious what it's been like to revisit them myself. 
And, well, maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but I had a pretty great time revisiting my childhood, even if I wouldn't say any of them are particularly great in a gameplay sense. The collision detection is often wonky, and the level design isn't exactly best in class. With Lion King in particular being especially frustrating at times, whether it's a nightmare of navigating this hellish monkey maze, or trying to drop onto platforms that you can't even see. But as I said earlier, the final cut of Aladdin definitely makes it friendlier and more accessible. I just wish The Lion King had gotten the same treatment. There's just something about these games that's strangely alluring. Maybe it's just a wonderful presentation. Okay, it probably is the wonderful presentation. As both Aladdin and Lion King feature some of the most exquisite animation of the 16-bit era. Which is to be expected given they were hand-drawn by actual Disney artists. The Genesis version of Aladdin in particular constantly impresses with its silky smooth animation and fantastic visual gags. Heck, even the Game Boy versions of both look great given the platform. Even if the Lion King does have some odd issues with scale. Like how Simba looks like a giant compared to the cute little hyenas. I just want to squeeze her cute little cheeks. The music also sounds shockingly good for the Game Boy. Even if it's clear, it's trying so hard. And speaking of the Game Boy, this was the first time I experienced either game on the platform, and I was pretty impressed just how faithful they were in an overall presentational sense, while also being disappointed by how terribly they play. With both games feeling like half-speed versions of the original, Aladdin does fare a little bit better of the two. On the other hand, Lion King for the Game Boy is horribly unresponsive, with the game straight up ignoring the jump button at times. I have no idea what that's about, but it is so frustrating. And yet, there's still just a certain charm to the entire thing. Maybe it's just the amazing puns, like on the pause screen. Get it? Point is, these games aren't completely irredeemable, even if that's largely thanks to the rewind feature that makes them infinitely more playable. It is fun to see how some of the bigger elements translate to the smaller screen, like how the Wilderbeast Stampede got turned into a surprisingly playable top-down sequence. The demo for Aladdin that we mentioned earlier is also terrible, but in a most wonderful way. It's stuffed to the gills with unused elements like the sword throwing enemy, unfinished animations such as this one that hasn't even been colored in yet, and the level designs are barely a step beyond the prototype stage, sometimes bearing almost no resemblance to the final game. And though it is short at a mere three levels, the demo is brutally difficult, so thank god for that rewind feature. I just wish early versions of the rest of the game stages had been made available too. Now even though it plays poorly, its rough state is exactly what makes a demo so darn interesting, as how often do we get to play an early version of a game and see how it evolved into the final product. And speaking of which, the collection also includes a respectable amount of behind the scenes content, featuring interviews with the development staff that delve into the development process of the games, including what it was like to work with Disney on the art and animation. Now interestingly, the Lion King's portion seems to be entirely made up of archived footage from the game's original launch while Aladdin features recently recorded post-mortem interviews. Both sets are interesting, but I do wish The Lion King had been able to receive the same more recent treatment. Taken all together, Disney classic games Aladdin and The Lion King is a fantastic way to experience these titles, whether for the first time or to scratch the nostalgic itch. I found it fun to compare and contrast to the various versions of each game, like how Lion King and Super Nintendo is a softer appearance with a more vivid color palette, while the Genesis version has an overall sharper look. Oh, and the Genesis version has a couple of exclusive shortcuts in the nightmarish I can't wait to be king stage, which just might make it a definitive version for me. Now while I wouldn't say I like any of these games a lot by themselves, I certainly would for the entire compilation. So I will. I like this compilation a lot, as it allows you to re-experience these games in near perfect form, at least to my memory. Especially once you factor in the much needed quality of life enhancements and Aladdin's final cut. And of course the behind the scenes features plus Aladdin demo are the cherry on top. So check it out if you want to relive some past memories or create some new ones featuring some of Disney's most well-known platformers. And with that, thanks for watching, and of course make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for everything else Nintendo Switch. We'll catch you later. Bye.